Everybody are online. Um, but it's really important when you're playing this game and try to concentrate as much as possible. You know, to challenge your mind. Um, I do, I do reading as well. Everybody are Hello everyone, I'm Alex Jordan. Welcome back to On The Line. This week's guest is a Jamaican cricketer whose journey throughout his career has been an unusual one. Ladies and gentlemen, please meet on this edition of On The Line, Nkrumah Bonner. Hey, Nkrumah Bonner, welcome to On The Line. How are you? <laughs> um, first and foremost, it's a pleasure being here. Um, I've landed in Antigua, you know, back in the tropics, which is really, really good. Um, you know, I finished, I did my first COVID test. Um, which was good and you know we get to get outside this morning which was really fabulous. Antigua's prettier huh? and Antigua's beach is breathtaking. Oh my god the beach you know white sand, blue water, but not somewhere. It is some of the most fantastic beach in the world. Well Nkrumah Bona welcome to On The Line. Um, I don't know if you've ever seen this series before but it's kind of where I call people on Zoom and we get real and I'm so excited to talk to you because we, we've met um, at the CPL, we played a little dominoes together, but uh, I would like to know you better. And of course the region has so many more questions about you after such a wonderful uh, debut, test and ODI debut this year. One of the hardest years you one would expect for an athlete to ex excel in his sport. So let me start with your name, Nkrumah Bona, top name, first of all. Tell me about well, why your parents named you Nkrumah and tell me about where you come from in Jamaica and a bit about your upbringing. First and foremost, I'm from Jamaica, as everybody knows, St. Catherine. Um, I grew up with my dad and mom, for most, and my brothers. And, you know, extended family, you know, one big yard with a lot of people, you know. And, um, what you know, part we of used Jamaica? To play it is St. Catherine. St. Catherine. Um, so, yeah, you know, we used to play cricket every day, all day, you know, eat orange, go to the river. You know, things that kids do uh, all day, every day. You know, one thing my parents normally tell us, ensure you run the errands first before you go outside and do anything else. You know, so we used to get that early in the morning, six, seven, early in the morning, and then it's cricket all day, cricket football, you know, whatever we could play, you know, we would do, you know, on a daily basis. And the name Nkuma now, my, my, my father, um, he loves Africa. You know, obviously, Kwame Nkuma. You know, was a great president of Ghana. So, you know, I think that's what inspired him to give me that name. Quite inspirational because the name seems to have given you some strength and resilience. And Kruma, I'm secretly obsessed with you and your career. If I am not mistaken, you had your T20 international debut in 2011. Right. And then debuted in ODI and Test 10 years, one decade later. I mean, I feel that we need to put you on, on a school's tour throughout the West Indies to talk to people about resilience, staying power, mental fitness. Explain to me what you were doing in that decade and how you kept the faith that you could play this game at the highest level. Um, really and truly, um, you know, after I made my debut in 2011, um, I would have learned a lot. Um, I played my first one day, sorry, T10 game in England. You know, it was the first I was playing in England. Um, it was, you know, it was tough for me. Um, I was born at the time. I, feel, I bowled a few, you know, long ups and stuff like that. It was very embarrassing. I couldn't grip the, <laughs> yeah, couldn't grip the ball at all. And it was a tough debut, you know. And then um, a few months after, you know, Australia came in the Caribbean and I played against them in St. Lucia. You know, I made 27 and then I didn't play, I didn't play until now. Um, obviously, it has been tough, you know, just, you know, going to first class season year in year or trying to improve my game, you know, mentally, physically, you know, and, and balancing everything with, with family and friends and everybody, you know, and, you know, to go through everything that I've gone through, you know, I went to the leeward, you know, um, Jamaica couldn't make Jamaica team. Um, I wasn't retained, you know, so I, I had to explore my options at the time. Thank God for franchise ticket. You know, I I had I had a, I had the opportunity to, to showcase my time in Leeward. You know, I went to Leeward for two and a half seasons. You know, I got sent home. And um yeah, that was also a tough period for me. I went to the state, 
you know, and I started at a nine to five, you know, I thought it was the end of my career, you know, until one day I just got fed up and decided I'm going back to Jamaica, you know, to, 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 to do what I love, you know, because obviously I was there doing something that I don't enjoy, you know, even though I was getting paid and stuff like that. Then I went back to Jamaica and, you know, I started in the one in the 50 over, you know, the first season, uh, which I did decent. And then obviously I got knocked down again. I fell down on a field at Lucas playing a franchise game. And, you know, I couldn't play the first couple of games. And, you know, the coach and sector telling me that, you know, I should prove that I'm fit again and stuff like that. And I was making runs and I wasn't getting selected. Jamaica at the time wasn't doing too well. You know, the batting was struggling. And uh, I, you know, I got really fed up. I got really fed up, you know, and I and I decided now for sure that I was going to stay to live, you know, for sure. <laughs> and, um, you know, my mentors and a few other people, you know, were talking me out of it and telling me that, you know, dreams is something worth chasing, you know. And, you know, I think that when he said that to me, you know, it, it, it changed my mind, you know, a bit. And then, you know, coincidentally, Derval Green got a injury, shoulder injury. And they dropped me in the squad, you know, and the first game I, I, I was 12 man, you know, and, you know, I, I performed my 12 man duties with joy, you know, and, um, you know, then I made my season debut against Barbados, you know, we were 27 for five, you know, and, you know, that was, yeah, I was, I was batting at number seven for Jamaica, and, you know, we were 27 for five, you know, Cummins and Roach and all of them, you know, had their tails up and stuff like that, and that Opportunity, you know, I saw opportunity in a tough situation and I made 97 that game and then from there on I just never turned back, you know. So um, you know, to everyone out there, you know, hard work and dedication and commitment, you know, is what needed to, to play at the highest level. Such an interesting story. I want to go back. You went to America and were working a nine to five job thinking your career was over in cricket. What were you doing? What work were you doing? What kind of work? It was some construction work I was doing at the time. Wow. Mm -hmm. We could have lost you to that. Imagine that. Well, I think it's a real testament to your, your character, uh, Nkrumah. You, you referenced your mentors. Can you tell us about who they are and uh, you know, what they've meant to you in your life? Well, well, well we have Michael Donegal, we have Dennis Gard, we have um, Arvel Higgins. You know, um, they play different roles in my life. And, you know, without them, I don't think I'll be here right now. You know, they really, you know, kept me going, you know, through my tough times. And, you know, I encourage every youngster to have someone in their corner who can, you know, help them through tough situations, you know, because I could not, could, I could have made it by myself. And obviously with God's help, of course, you know, I could not have made it by myself. So they really, you know, kept me in line and kept me pushing. In my effort to prepare for this interview and find out a bit more about you and Kruma, I looked you up on Instagram. Now, you're clearly not a big social media man. You have three posts on there. But I would like to read the three posts because I think they are telling about your personality. The first post it, it says, keep fighting. The second post says, I just keep running my race. And the third post says, life, life knows no failure. Failure only exists for those who compare themselves with others. Wouldn't you say that is a good sort of timeline and story of, of what the strength and, and the strength of character that you have shown to keep your career going? Yes, of course. You know, um, throughout my career, you know, um, you know, you have a lot of people who have, you know, passed me play for West Indies and stuff like that. And, you know, you, you, you take two steps back to go five steps forward, you know. And, you know, all I can say is keep believing in yourself, keep running your race. You know, they might be there at, at the beginning, but you'll get there, you know, regardless of the road that you'll take, you might have to go on the boat while they go on the plane, you know, but you'll get there, you know, and if you, as, as long as you can keep that faith, you know, and believe in yourself 100% and trust the process that you're going through, you know, regardless of what's happening around, you know, I always say a well-established man can survive in any situation, you know, so it's really important for every young star or cricketer to you know, really invest in their mind, you know, because the mind is really powerful than we think. And, you know, that's what my mentors, you know, have, have helped me to accomplish so far. Well, what an interesting story from Nkrumah and proof 
that failure does not mean giving up. All right, we take a quick break here and on the other side, we find out what Enkuma does for fun. Um, but it's really important when you're playing this game and try to concentrate as much as possible you know to challenge your mind um i do i do reading as well hello and welcome back to on the line we are speaking with the cricketer from st catherine jamaica and kruma bona uh i'm glad that you mentioned the mental because the mental is such a crucial part of every game and I think especially cricket, and if we're talking test cricket, even more so. Um, do you specifically work on your mental strength? What do you do and what advice would you give people? Because there's one thing to get physically strong. And of course, when the body is strong, the mind tends to be stronger. But do you, um, what do you do to, to take control of your mental game? Um, it's not all about cricket. I play, I play draft, I play diamond and all the time. Um, but it's really important when you're playing this game, I try to concentrate as much as possible, you know, to challenge your mind. Um, I, do, I do reading as well, you know, most of the time I do half an hour, I can't get more than that. Um, you do half, what, half an hour? Half an hour reading. What, what do you read? I read every, like, I read all books. I'm, I'm obsessed, I'm a big reader and I love books, but Enkrumer, I don't find that cricketers read. Maybe that's a big, a broad, sweeping statement. How come, have you always been a reader? No, no. Um, my mentors brought me into that as well. You know, um, they told me to let my concentration. I was willing. I was willing to do anything to improve my myself, improve my my game. You know, and they always tell me, you know, you have all the skills, you have everything else. Just try to get your mindset and your focus, you know, a little bit better. You know, so I was willing to do, and I and I trust them one hundred percent as well. So I was willing to do anything that they said at the time. You know, and, you know, it, it paid off so far. That is such sterling advice you would not believe. Because I, I, I fed up tell people that, you know, the mind is also a muscle. And especially in this era that we live in where uh, information is so immediate and you check in your phone and check in your status and watching something and watching something else. It's not great for the mind and it's not great for the nervous system. And in fact, reading and concentrating the mind is, is good, not only for the brain, but for the for the nervous system, so you you manage half an hour at a time, yeah. No, I mean, you know, for those don't, who don't like to read, you know, I started like five minutes of focus, you know, then I moved to ten minutes, then moved to fifteen minutes, then moved to twenty. So, you know, it's gradually, you know, whenever you find yourself not into it, you just stop at that point, and when you know you start the next day, and you know you will gradually improve. You know, you have people can read for hours and and you know keep their focus. I'm not at that level as yet, you know, I'm trying to get there, but. Half an hour is my level at the moment. I'm so impressed. Fantastic. Well, Nkrumah, you played two test matches, um, currently at an average of 57.75. I think you would take it. <laughs> no? Yeah, for sure. For sure. For sure. Um, let's, let's, let's move on from your individual cricket. One of the things Phil Simmons uh, spoke to the media about after the victory in Bangladesh was how impressed he was, was with the partnerships that the West Indies were able to muster. Uh, you were involved in a few of those partnerships, including one with Joshua De Silva. What do you what do you make of him? And tell us a bit about that now. Um, obviously, Joshua is a really talented guy. He's a very hard worker, very disciplined, very dedicated and committed to cricket. You know, and he's an awesome person. You know, outside of cricket, you know, you can reason with him and stuff like that and have fun with him. He's, He's just a team guy, you know, in general. And, you know, I enjoy batting with him, I enjoy playing with him, you know, and he push, he, he not only push me, but he, you know, he push everyone within the team with his work. Nice, seems like a real cool fella. Let's talk about Uncle Phil. Phil Simmons uh, has had so much success in the coaching world, in other parts of the world, including with Ireland and with Afghanistan, and a few ups and downs with the West Indies, but we've got him back and, um, seems to be doing really well. Can you tell me a bit about your impression of him as a person and as a coach? First and foremost, he's a, he's a good human being. That's the first thing, you know, and he's a wonderful coach, have a lot of knowledge and he keeps testing our minds and he creates a really good environment for us to really go there and express ourselves, you know. Um, and but, but for me, that's the best thing a coach can do, you know, just create that environment for players to really go there and express themselves, you know. And whenever, you know, people fail, he still, you know, um, encourage us. You know, to keep believing in yourself, keep backing yourself, keep doing what you, you need to do, you know. And obviously, he pushes us 
you know, to work even harder. Um, it's funny, I, I whenever I think of Phil Simmons, I think he has a sort of uh, a mischievous kind of laugh and giggle. And I had asked him about you and Puma. And I said to him, you know, Phil, the truth is, I thought he was shy at first. And his response was, <laughs> I don't know about shy. <laughs> Uh, all right, Captain Craig Brathwaite. Now he's a shy fella. He doesn't talk a lot, um, but he led you guys to victory. A word on your captain. For me, I, I look up to Craig. Um, I think Craig has, you know, real strong, strong mental strength. He always wants to go out there and fight for the West Indies. And I always admire that about him. He's very professional. He's very disciplined about his game. You know, and for one, you know, he really encouraged each batsman and that team to go out there and really express themselves, play what we know and how we know to do it, you know, and, you know, just to back yourself 100%, you know, and as for me, the Bangladesh tour was really a success, not only on the field, but off the field also. Yeah, it, it really was, boy, and it was such a reminder uh, to us as a region how much better we feel when things are going well with our cricket team, you know? It, I guess you could feel it, right? Did you feel the response? And perhaps that's a good question. Who did you hear from? You must have heard from a lot of different people, but who are some exciting people you heard from and what did they say? Well, well, for one, you know, after the first test match, you know, there was a real big buzz in the Caribbean, you know, I heard from politicians, I heard from friends, from family. And, you know, you could feel that proudness, you know, among the Caribbean people. And that's, that's such a joy, you know, and that really even inspired and pushed me personally even more to really go out there and fight for the people of the Caribbean. And elsewhere. Good. You're a man who's been going from bubble to bubble, so you know the life. How have yeah, you been past be how have you been passing the time? Um, well, I've been watching movies, talking to the family, you know, just doing stuff, man, to just make the time pass. Most of the time sleeping though, because you know, Bangladesh has been a, a tough tour, you know, and there was a lot of effort put in. So it's really important, you know, for me to try to recover as much as possible. So yeah, I know the job is not done, far from done, and you know, I have to keep working harder and harder. Any other messages you want to get out to the to the region and Kruma about and Kruma Bona or cricket or about anything that you've been heightsing on? I just want to um, say thanks for, for all the support, you know, I've been receiving. You know, I want to say thanks to all my mentors, um, all my family members and everyone that, that has been supporting Western East Cricket. And I just urge, urge you guys to keep um, supporting us. Um, I know we have one in Bangladesh and there are a lot of expectations, but, you know, um, we are keep working hard for you guys, you know, and I really, honestly, I've never felt so much support in my life. And, you know, I really appreciate it from everyone. And they're great. It's the, you are a real inspirational story, Nkrumah. I think we live in a time where, because everything is so instant with social media, people think if you don't make it at 18, you're not going to make it. Or if you don't make it by 24, how likely is it for you to make it? And you're just showing the world that, you know, <laughs> there's no story. There is no particular story that is one, how everything plays out. Everybody has their individual story. And I, I, I love Jamaican expressions. So I'm going to use one with you, which is, what for you, kia on for you. What's for God time and it's the right time, right? <laughs> yeah, see it. Last thing is, even though I'm a proud West Indian and I, I am a... CARICOM person. I believe in one region. I feel as at home in Kingston as I do in Bridgetown. Just between me and you, Barbados is still the better domino players, all right? I just want you to know that from my heart. Um, I think everyone is, is has their own opinion. Uh, I can't <laughs> <feel good. laughs> but I think Jamaica is the best in everything. <laughs> <laughs> it was great talking to you, Nkrumah. Thank you so much for being on the line. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. And Kruma Bonner's story, one of resilience, hard work, persistence, and self-belief, may inspire all of us. Thank you so much to him for joining me on the show. You join me next week for another edition of On The Line, where I catch up with the Antiguan, Mali Richards. Well, I don't like cricket. I love it. And I'm happy to welcome to On The Line today, a cricketer who has brought joy to the hearts of many West Indians this year, 2021. So let's welcome him in. Hello, admit. Ladies and gentlemen, presenting. 
presenting <laughs> presenting and crew of one up